Um, my name is Elaine Hegg. My maiden name was Myrie. And I went to country school from 53 to 54 um, up to 59, uh, 1960. From kindergarten through sixth grade. And from kindergarten, first and second, I went to Pleasant Number 5, which was at the end of our driveway. And then from second grade through fifth, I went through Locust, which was Pleasant Number 3. And then at sixth grade, came back again to Pleasant Number um, uh, 5, before we were, um, they decided that they were consolidating some of the schools and they should move the rest of us on into town and starting in junior high, which was difficult because everybody already had their friends. Mm -hmm. But we hung in there. We were a close-knit country school group, so. All right. Could you talk a little bit about um, your childhood? You, so you grew, did you grow up on a farm? Um, how far away from the school did you grow up? I grew up on a farm. Um, the driveway was probably about a half a mile to the school, which is at the end of our driveway. It was a stone school, Ple um, Pleasant Valley, number three, number five, excuse me. And um, we'd walk down the road, and it was difficult for me at first because I was the only little one around the area. And I'd walk, and, and uh, some days I might see a fox cross the road, or, you know, and I'd run home again. and. And I was never one to eat much of a lunch, so I'll never forget the day my mom had given me a sack lunch. And I got to school, and it was time to eat. Well, I didn't eat it, and I was running home. I was scared of the boy chasing me, and he said, I was chasing you because you took my lunch by mistake. <laughs> so just things like that, you know, it was just difficult for me to kind of because I was the only little one in the school that year, so that was kind of difficult. But mm -hmm. I hung in there and I played football with the big boys. So, <laughs> <laughs> but that's really neat that you had a school right at the end of your driveway, and you attended that school, correct? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I attended there from kindergarten, first and uh, grade, and then I went on to Locust from second grade through fifth grade and then came back to the country school at the end of our driveway then when I was in sixth grade mm -hmm. before we were bust to town and starting in seventh grade. Mm -hmm. And that school is no longer around, correct? No, it was, um, it looked a lot like the Locust School. It was a stone school and it was just starting to fall into decay. Mm -hmm. You know, it needed repair and now we look back and different people say, oh, we should have tried to, you know, have it you know, repaired, but it was just too far gone. But I can still remember the day it was sad when the end of the summer came and we had our bikes, we rode our bikes to the end of the driveway and there were men in pickups throwing everything on, pitching it on, mm -hmm. you know, because they were going to, and I'm thinking, I wonder what happened to all that stuff. It probably went to the, who knows, the garbage. Mm -hmm. But anyway, but it was a nice school, a lot like the Locust School. Mm -hmm. So stone, uh, kind of that box car, like rectangle shape. With yeah, just holes. like locust over here, mm -hmm. the rock, you know, mm -hmm. the, the rock wall. And, and um, just walking into the school, you know, those country schools had a certain smell about them. You know, just that, I can't, ex maybe it was the uh, compound they used on the floor when they'd sweep the floors, but it was always a, it was just a kind of a cozy feeling to walk into the school. Mm -hmm. So then, um, how did you get to school then? You just walked down your driveway? Walked down the driveway, and then uh, when it was time to go to Locust, we'd walk to the end of the driveway, and then a bus would pick us up and take us up here to Locust. Mm -hmm. So. And then, what? No, you're no, not. Yeah. Were there a lot of kids that rode the bus? Quite a few. Mm -hmm. yeah, quite a few. And, and um, just, you know, your usual antics and tricks and whatever you call them on the bus that kids <laughs> do, you know. Mm -hmm. but, but yeah, it, it was a lot of fun. And our bus driver, Richard Anderson, 
And he was the nicest man. In fact, he just passed away now this past fall. But he'd look in the mirror and he'd wink at the girls and, you know, he was just such a, a nice, kind man. And I remember he, um, he and his wife were married when I was still going to Locust to school. And so we thought that was really pretty neat to be invited by the bus driver mm -hmm. to his wedding. <laughs> you know. So, and he just, yeah, he was a nice, nice man. In fact, every fall, as I've mentioned to you, we have the um, get-together here. And uh, I got up and introduced him. I said, my bus driver is here tonight. And I said, he was such a nice bus driver. And he got up and he was waving to the crowd. And not even a month later, he passed away. So oh, wow. Elaine said that was really nice, Elaine, that you, you know, yeah. mentioned him. So. Mm -hmm. Um, did, was he your, bu your bus driver throughout your entire rural school life? Um, or? Pretty much. Mm -hmm. Do you remember any um, particularly unusual times of getting to school, like weather, snow? Oh yeah, sometimes, you know, I remember we'd get out of school early because we were having a snowstorm. And we'd have to walk down our driveway, you know, and they'd they drop us off because the bus didn't come in to our driveway until later on my dad um, convinced them that our driveway was a county road because there was another farm back of us so the bus ended up coming in eventually and of course you know some of the kids would say they were they were jealous or oh let Myrie's walk don't drive in let them walk you know, but the drug, it came, the bus came in later, you know, years then, but at first we had to walk to the end of the driveway, mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. yeah, we got to be cold some days, but, but it was kind of fun too, mm -hmm. you know. What about on your way to Locust? Did you ever have any troubles getting to school? Um, you mean as far as the weather or? Yeah, like <coughs> snowstorms or yeah, yeah. severe weather? Yeah, yeah, and then some days we'd get out of school early because it was storming, you know, the snow, but um, pretty much, you know, there was never really any trouble with the bus, you know, once we got there. It's because Richard was driving, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> nice man, and his wife later on was our, one of our 4-H leaders, and so, you know how young teenagers are, it was so funny, and we listened we were doing something over at her house on a Saturday afternoon for 4-H and, and uh, they were announcing on different songs on the radio and so Elaine said, well there's some Indian mountains around here in our woods. And we said, well could we go over and see if we could see if there are, could we dig them up? Or, and she goes, well I'm not sure where they are. So as some silly teenage girls we called into the radio station and requested a song, and we told the announcer to tell him that we were out digging up Indian graves. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> you know how stupid how kids can get. Mm -hmm. They got a kick out of that. Mm -hmm. but, but anyway, yeah, but she was a, a nice 4-H leader, and she was, the, the whole community was so close-knit back then, mm -hmm. you know, like for get-togethers or, Christmas programs at the, um, we have them a lot of times at the church, you know, our school program. And it was just such a close-knit time, and it was such a special time because it isn't like now. I mean, it was a big deal to have something like that. You didn't go out that often, you know, but so it was a lot of fun. But you lived around with your classmates, correct? Right, mm -hmm. right. How do you remember your classmates? Oh, they were all nice kids. Um, we were, you know, pretty close-knit. And um, one of the boys, I had, I kind of liked him. And I think he liked me. <laughs> he'd bring me candy bars and bubble gum from uh, stores on when he'd come back from on Saturday. And, but it was, it was just a lot of fun. We'd play baseball outside or, you know, we'd swing or just, different games, so it was a lot of fun. We all got along really mm -hmm. well together. How do you think your classmates remember you? I don't know, I hope they remember. 
I hope they liked liked me as a classmate. I, you know, no, never really had any problems. We always got along well together. And you know how the boys would like to tease a little bit and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget, maybe I shouldn't say this on camera. You can edit it, right? <laughs> we were, I don't know, it was during the lunch hour, and we were um, drawing, doing some things for art class, practicing. And one of the gals in my class went over and sat with the boy I liked, and they were drawing together, and I thought, you know, that takes a lot of nerve. I thought, I like him. Mm -hmm. So I went over there, and I took the paper they were working on, and I ripped it too. And she just looked at me in shock. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I was just, I mean, I, I think I outgrew some of that later on. I mean, I, I was a daring little kid mm -hmm. sometimes, but not always. But, you know, but we had a good time. Mm -hmm. Well. How many students were in your classes? Um, well, I think the whole school was probably 23 or 24, maybe. But in my class, there were six of us. Mm -hmm. And um, and this was for Pleasant? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then for Locust? Yeah, both. Yeah, about the same number for both. And some of the ones that were at the first school, Pleasant number five, also came to Locust with me. So oh. it was just a yeah, so I mean it was, and then plus the entire school would have been maybe, well, we're talking first grade through fifth or sixth. Sometimes they divided them up and the school had maybe second, third, and fourth, fifth, and the older ones went to the, another school, but usually an average about 23 or 24 kids in the school. It's a pretty sizable school. Yeah, and was yeah. it like, yeah. Pretty evenly distributed between the ages. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were always thinking, like in the winter, we'd play in the basement, different games down there with a big basketball and things like that. But yeah, it was um, it was really nice though. Mm -hmm. And I liked all the teachers. Maybe some I felt more at ease with than others, but um, they were all very nice. Very nice. How many teachers did you have? I had, um, in kindergarten, I had um, a lady, her name was Miss Teske. And I was the only little kid in the school, so that was kind of hard. And I think I told you earlier, like, I remember one day she was talking about following the leader, so um, she said, well, why don't you be the leader and then I'll follow you. And so I was crawling under the tables and all over and she had to follow me because I was the leader. <laughs> and um, but she was a nice lady. And I had a chance later on in her later years to visit her and that was really nice. And I went to her funeral and, and um, in fact, um, one of the guys that's on our um, school committee, Glenn Larson, um, I believe also I had her in school, so. And then uh, when I went to Locust, I had Mrs. Sockletney and Mrs. Anderson, and they are both very, very nice, very nice um, teachers. You know, you just felt you weren't afraid, you know what I mean, of saying anything, or because they just um, made you feel so welcome and just so, I don't know, almost like a family. You know, you weren't afraid to ask them questions that way. Or some later on, I mean, put the fear in you. But, but they were all pretty, pretty nice teachers, really. Mm -hmm. You know, and they, you learned a lot from them. They were really, really good. And then, you, did you have another teacher back at, Lo at Pleasant again? When I came back for sixth grade? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I had, um, uh, her name was Miss Hennington. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In fact, I invited her to my wedding, so that was kind of neat, you know. So, yeah. What is your earliest memory of country school? Um, just going and kind of being afraid because I was the only little kid, you know, and it was all new to me. You know, I'd never been to school, of course, and but I remember just 
not being, I was never hungry. My mom would pack a lunch and I wouldn't eat it. And so I tell her, don't hardly put anything in there because I'm not hungry. So I'll never forget my lunch in a paper bag, I think it was then, got mixed up with a bigger boy's lunch. So I decided I wanted to go home. And so I had his lunch by mistake. And I was carrying it home, and he was chasing me. And I thought he was after me, and he was going to be mean. And he said, no, all he said to my mom. My mom saw me coming running down the driveway. And he goes, I just wanted my lunch. <laughs> <laughs> she took my lunch by mistake. <laughs> but yeah, so I just, you know, was never really hungry in school, I guess. I mean, I was always nervous. and I, I wasn't much of an eater, and, and um, I was small for my age. So, I mean, I, so, but it was, and then we had, and we had um, hot lunch, so you could bring something and, you know, they would heat that up and, and uh, now in the school my husband went to, he said it was kind of neat because the mothers would take turns during the winter bringing an actual hot lunch. Really? Yeah. And so, um that would be good for the kids, you know, during the winter. Whereas in our case, if we wanted something hot, we had to bring it and then they'd heat it up and, at noon, so. Oh, okay. Yeah. By stove top? Did you heat it on the stove, or? Well, it was like a little, a little two burner stove that plugged in. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that was kind of nice, you mm -hmm. know, to have something hot during the, during the lunch hour. What did your lunches typically look like? Oh, I guess I had, I like peanut butter. So I had peanut butter sandwiches and, or maybe a meat, sliced ham and then cookie or an apple, something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but they were good lunches. Mm -hmm. Whenever you were um, the youngest in your class, do you remember the older kids ever helping you out, or did you get along with the older kids? Yeah, I, I did. Yeah, and they were all nice kids. Um, sometimes the boys would like to tease, you know, boys will be boys. And But when I was, when I went to my first school, when I was in kindergarten, first, I was the only little kid. And so when the boys would be out there playing football, and I, I think back now and I'm thinking, talk about nerve. I mean, I wouldn't, later on I wouldn't have dared, I'd be afraid. But they'd be playing football, and I'd be running out there when they were playing football and grab her on their legs and just, and they'd run and drag me along. I, mean, <laughs> I don't know, but, but it was kind of fun, you know. And then, you know, you always had, the girls like to wear different outfits, you know, and I don't know, I'm sure you've never heard of the days when um, farmers would get feed and sacks, where it was, now it's paper sacks, but then it was material, mm -hmm. different materials. Mm -hmm. And I can remember as a little girl when my dad would bring home some feed and he'd put it in the granary and it was all different prints, um, prints, you know, cloth prints. And we jump around in the sacks and say, I want that one for my dress. I want this one. You know, it's kind of neat. Oh. You know? But I still have some of those prints. And that's what you typically wear to country school? Yeah, Mom would sew uh, outfits for us and skirts and blouses. and So that was kind of neat. Yeah, that's what we'd wear. And sometimes in the winter, we'd probably wear um, jeans or pants underneath our dresses. Because, you know, mm -hmm. we couldn't wear just... You had to wear a, a skirt or a, a dress, so we just wear the jeans underneath the dress if it was really cold, mm -hmm. you know. Did the boys usually wear jeans? Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and flannel shirts. Yeah. Farmer boys. Farmer mm -hmm. boys. <laughs> yeah. Did the teacher? What did the teacher usually wear? Oh, she usually had on like a blouse and skirt, or you know, never pants of any kind, you know, just a dress or skirt, mm -hmm. sweater, blouse, yeah. So you came to school at 
8 a.m., 9 a.m.? It was about, I suppose school started at about 8.30. 8.30? Yeah. What did you, what did you do in the morning when you got there? Well, then we just um, put our lunch on a, we had a place out in the entryway. And they get ready, and usually when I was at Locust, um, we'd have a, a prayer every morning. And um, I think a song of some kind. Mm -hmm. You know, and then start start the classes. You know, each class would be called up to the front. And one thing about it, um, for instance, if it was the first graders, and so if they were up having class and the older ones were back, but the older ones helped the little ones. So you know, you'd learn from the. Or if the bigger ones would be up there, the little ones could listen and learn, mm -hmm. you know, from the big ones. So that was kind of nice that way. Everybody helped one another and learned from each other. But mm -hmm. so that was nice, and it helped you learn, you know, and grow as a student. I think. But also, with your teacher calling you up one by one, usually like, no, like. Like my class, there were six, so she'd say, for instance, with the fifth grade, please come to class. And then there was a little table up front with chairs. And then we'd have our class. Well, the others were supposed to be doing their lessons and learn, you know, while we were having class. But a lot of times they'd listen, mm -hmm. you know, and see what our class was to saying or doing, you know. But, yeah. But, I mean, you learn, everybody learned from each other, I think. It was really nice. Mm -hmm. Did you have a favorite subject while you were in school? Favorite subject? Yeah, I liked reading and spelling. And um, <clears throat> I always liked, to, always liked to read. And I was excited because when we had our Christmas program at the church here, um, I was chosen to um, read the Christmas story. Aww. So that was kind of nice. Mm -hmm. I can still remember the dress I had on. <laughs> Isn't that funny how? And people say to me, you can remember that? And I said, yeah. And I had patent leather shoes. And I can still remember that boy I kind of liked and the one that kind of liked me. He turned around and he goes, you really look nice tonight. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, isn't it funny how you remember those things, you know? So you had a special dress for your Christmas? Yeah, it was like, I think it was a plaid dress. And uh, sometime it'd be those nylon dresses. I remember mom used to make them for us for Easter, matching dresses, kind of a stiff nylon, it had a print in it. But but yeah, so I just wish I had some of those. I, I remember when I was moving, seeing some of them. I don't know where they are now, but, um, but yeah, you know, and we were, just happy with what we had, you know. We didn't have a lot of outfits, but mm -hmm. you know. So. so you you had reading. You, did you have arithmetic, math? Yeah, I didn't like arithmetic. No. <laughs> that was a hard subject for me. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I had to learn. I don't know what you call it nowadays, but canceling. You know what I mean? Um, fractions, and you'd have to cross out like three-fifths, you know. I just couldn't get it. Mm -hmm. I just, and my mom worked with me over the weekend, and I remember my dad came in before he went to work and helped help me with it, and I finally got it, mm -hmm. you know. But I just, there was something about math and arithmetic. Mm -hmm. Now my husband, that was his favorite. Oh, really? Yeah, but not, I like spelling and writing and, and English, that kind of thing. Yes, I, I majored in English in college, so. Mm -hmm. What other subjects did you have? Did you have cursive, um, penmanship, music? Penmanship, yeah, penmanship. And we had music, and we did art, um, spelling, social studies. Um, and some of the, my workbooks I have, have some of those subjects, those books in there, but I'm trying to think what else. Um, um, maybe studying about the land and community and history and that kind of thing, you know. 
So it was a variety of things that we learned, you know, had. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was kind of neat because every fall then, we'd get a list of the workbooks we needed. So we'd get to go to town that night, because they had them in the drugstore in the back room. And we'd get our, give the guy our list of what we needed for workbooks and we'd bring them all home. And you know, just the smell of all those new workbooks, you know, mm -hmm. kind of neat. And I didn't want to, <laughs> I didn't want to bend mine or anything. So when I'd open up the cover, I'd be real careful. Because mm -hmm. I didn't want to, you know. I guess, you know, back then when you didn't have as much, you know, so you wanted to make sure. I think that's why I was a saver. I kept a lot of my things, mm -hmm. you know, because I didn't, you know. You just couldn't go out and buy things all the time, right. you know. So I just like to save things. And Did you have music? We had music, okay. yeah. And in fact, um, we had a record player, and um, one of the songs, and to this day we have it, we sing it every year when we have our program, um, The Crafty Crow. And Luke Chisel, who was a, a, a judge and an attorney in, in Mississippi, he went to the locust school here, and he'd come back every year for our get together, and that was his favorite song. Mm -hmm. So every year we'd have him sing the Crafty Crow, and he said, well, maybe people are getting sick of me singing the song. We said, no, no, that's part of it, you know. He just loves singing that song. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was a popular one. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, let's see here. What was I going to ask? I don't remember. Oh, so did you have like a piano in your school? No, you didn't no have piano? a piano. You just had a record mm -hmm. player. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and then I think too, in one of the notebook I showed you with every year when we have our annual event every fall, one of the years, um, the title was A Day in the Life of a Country School. So I have everything that went on. I should take that one out and look at it. Um, everything that went on in the school mm -hmm. for the day. And so that kind of covered music and art and everything else. Mm -hmm. But yeah, but just walking in the school, I mean, it still has that same smell. Maybe it's the compound they put on the floor. Or I don't know, but something about it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And of course, you know, you were always playing little jokes, and there's a couple jo things I could say, but maybe I'd better not say. <laughs> You could always edit it, right? Right, right. Well, it was a winter day, and it was over at the Pleasant Valley, not Locust, but the other school. And we were staying in for recess, some of us, because it was cold and we didn't want to go out. Well, um, one of the gals got an idea. The teacher was not around, so she said, let's move the clock ahead, about 45 minutes, and then we can get out early. <laughs> well... But I thought, well, that wouldn't really work because the bus driver, the bus won't be here, you know, right away. Well, mm -hmm. anyway, she moved the clock ahead, and the teacher came back in. Oh my goodness! She goes, "Where did the time go?" She goes, well, "Look at how late it's gotten to be." So she dismisses the school, and all these kids are out playing around, waiting for the bus. Well, it's 45 minutes yet before the bus is going to get there. So. Afterwards, she has the radio on, listening to the news and things, and we were cleaning up. And they announced the time. And she about had a fit when she realized that somebody had done something. So the next morning, boy, did we get a talking to him. Nobody really fessed up, you know, and tattled on everybody. But, mm -hmm. yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> the little stories like that. Yeah, yeah, it's just one little thing, you know. You, you know, do for fun. Mm -hmm. Well, we want to get out of school, I guess. <laughs> but anyway. So you had to provide your own workbooks? Yeah, well, you mean for the different subjects? Mm -hmm. Well, we'd get them at this drugstore then, but we had to pay for them. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Did you have to pay for other materials? or? Um, some we didn't, some we didn't. You know, we had to bring our own colors and pencils and things like that, but Paste? No, I think that was all provided. And paste came in these bigger, like, 
quart jars almost. Mm -hmm. And it was really fun to eat the paste. <laughs> oh, and mm -hmm. I think about it now, you know, the paste had those, oh, like you have on popsicles, those wooden sticks. Mm -hmm. And it was, so we'd dip out of the paste, you know, and use it for pasting. And then if we wanted to, we'd just take out a scoop and eat it. <laughs> No wonder you were never hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but now I think I could never eat that paste. <laughs> Do you remember um, books being provided, like library books? Um, did you have yeah. like Dick and Jane? Did you have? Yeah, there was um, a lot of times the school superintendent would come, or the uh, elementary superintendent would come. She was very nice. Or they'd come and they'd bring books. And then. Um, We'd have them maybe for a month, and then they'd bring new ones. Mm -hmm. But the teacher always read right after lunch, and Laura Ingalls Wilder was very popular. Mm -hmm. She read those books. And, and another was The Boxcar Children. Um, it was about this family of four kids that lived in a, an old boxcar. They didn't have a home. And I saw that same book when we were, some friends and I were for an outing a few years ago at a bookstore, an old bookstore. Over a hundred dollars for just that book. Really? Wow. Yeah. Huh. yeah. I don't even know if it's those are in print anymore, but but yeah, it used to be fun to you know she would read to us after the lunch hour. Mm -hmm. That was nice. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about um, your school, mm -hmm. like the the features of it. Can you describe both uh, Pleasant and Locust? What did the inside look like? Um, you just walk in and sometimes, if I remember correctly, and Locust still has that same color on the wall, kind of a green with a white part of it, and the blackboard's way up in front, and the wooden, the desks, and it all had, they had that same school smell, if you know what I mean, and maybe it's because they used compound on the floor when they'd sweep the floors, but, um, rows of desks, and then both schools had a little table up front with chairs. And then it was your turn to come to class. They'd say, like, will the fifth grade please come to class? And we'd come up and do our, you know, have our lesson. And, um, but it was just, um, it was just a homey feeling. Just, even when you walked into the schoolroom, there was a certain smell to the schoolroom. And then bulletin boards, of course, you know, have art class, we'd have different things on the bulletin board and and books along the side and bookcases, as Locust does now. We still, and that's pretty much how it looked. Yeah, the Locust School. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You also had a stage, kind of a yes, yes. In Locust, Locust had a stage. Your other one did not have a stage, okay. if I remember correctly. But yeah, that was nice. To, um, and then of course you had a Valentine party. Oh, okay. That was really fun. I'm off. I thought the other day, I wonder where my valentines are. I hope I can find those back. Because mm -hmm. I kept a lot of those. Mm -hmm. And then you'd exchange valentines. And if you were real lucky, you'd get, you'd get a valentine with maybe a sucker or a bubblegum tape to the back. Mm -hmm. By somebody. You know. but, yeah. but it was pretty much the same as you saw today with the local school. The inside is pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. Same with Pleasant too? It was the, yeah, same You walk Pleasant. in, the teacher's desk is in the back, mm -hmm. all the desks. Yeah. Um, did yeah. you have uh, like indoor plumbing at all? Or electricity? Oh, no. no, neither school? Electricity we did, but okay. not indoor plumbing. Mm -hmm. no. And we had the... And then if you wanted to go out to the... If you needed to go to the bathroom, You'd have to put a little sticker or a little note or with a bulletin board that you went outside to the bathroom. And of course, sometimes it was tempting for some of those kids to hang around outside a little longer, <laughs> <laughs> to just to come in. <laughs> but that was sort of kind of the, um, the discipline techniques of the teacher. Yeah. But yeah. you put a little note on the bulletin board yeah. or something. Yeah. And you know, you she had respect for you and you had respect for her. And, in the last day of school, you know, when we got our report cards then, I'm just, maybe I'm sidetracking now, but 
the last day, then the parents could come, you know, for a meal, picnic style. And um, we'd get our report cards. And you didn't know until that day if you passed or failed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then you open up the report card and you just kind of look to see if promoted to the next grade, or, you know. Mm -hmm. So. So you kind of had like a last day picnic or something? Yeah, we had a picnic. Yeah, and all the fact, families I, came? Yeah, in fact, I have some pictures in one of my books with some of that. Mm -hmm. And they play baseball, and and uh, in one of the last days here at Locust, I can remember when we had our picnic, and there was a scare going around the area. A cougar had been seen. Mm -hmm. And so we were scared to get off the school bus. And um, I remember walking down our driveway, and we heard something. And so the neighbor men came, and my dad and brother, and they were all looking to see if maybe it could be in that area, but they never saw anything. Mm -hmm. right? But that was the last day of school. They were talking, you know, really afraid about the cougar. But, mm -hmm. but yeah, so the last day, you know, you'd wear something special, a special short outfit, or pedal put, they could call them capris now, but we call them pedal pushers. Pedal pushers? Yeah. And, um, it was a fun day. Mm -hmm. I mean, you learn so much, and I mean, it was a close knit family type feeling, and I don't know. You, I just, I think you appreciated everything so much too. Mm -hmm. You know. Do you remember any other student parent uh, parent teacher interactions? Did you have like, um, like we call them now, parent you know. Teachers' parent conferences. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they they have those too, and and parents would go to school and, and tell the kids how <clears throat> tell parents how the child was doing. <clears throat> but, um, yeah, it was um, wasn't it? That was a good it was a good learning experience with everything. I'm sure you passed with flying colors, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I was always promoted. I was, you know, and then each report card when you get it, you know, there'd be a little writing from the teacher what you needed to improve or how you were doing, or you know. Mm -hmm. So, and as I said, I always felt the te most of my teachers were really nice. I mean, I felt comfortable around them, especially when I asked that one if she'd not mark me absent. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, yeah. But um, so going back to the features of your school, so did you have the flag? Did you have George Washington? We had the flag and George Washington and Abraham Lincoln. Mm -hmm. And every morning we'd say the Pledge of Allegiance mm -hmm. and then a little prayer. I wish I could remember what that prayer was. But um, we'd stand. And um, just various things on the bulletin board that we were working on, you know, had been doing in cl art class. Or, um, but yeah, I just, um, but the features were pretty much the same in both schools. Mm -hmm. Did you have lamps for lighting? Did you? Electric lights. Electric yeah. lights? Yeah. And I remember when I was going to Pleasant Number no. 5, <clears throat> we were studying the phone, you know, because it was dialed oh. on. And another gal and I, in fact, I have it in one of my books. Um, it was called, we decided, you had to make up your own little thing by using the phone. You know, you wanted to have something to use the phone. So we had a, I think we did a, like a flower shop. And one of us ordered the flowers and the other one was writing down and taking down everything. And this was all per phone conversation, learning to use the phone. So that was interesting and we had to go practice and we, I remember we practiced in the basement of that other school. Now the basement in that other school was not as nice as the basement over here at Locust. Mm -hmm. But, but um, but yeah, so we were always, you know, just doing different things like mm -hmm. that. And you had a furnace down there at yeah. Locust? Did you mm -hmm. have a furnace over at Pleasant? Yeah, we did, but you couldn't play down in that basement like you could over here. 
What sort of games did you play in the basement? Oh, I remember there was one with a, a basketball where you, I don't, know, I don't know the name of it, but like say, just for example, you go 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, so for 10, maybe you take the basketball and hit it 10 times on the wall. Or when you get down to six, you do something else six times at the ball, or just various games that mm -hmm. we did, you know. But um, but backing up to the one where I, at the end of our driveway, I'll never forget when we were walking to school, and one of our kittens followed us, and I thought, now what are we going to do? And I was a cat lover from the time I was real little, mm -hmm. so I put it in the mailbox. <laughs> <laughs> and so when my dad and I couldn't call my mom and tell her that you know the kitten followed us mm. so when my dad came home at noon he opened the mailbox up and there was this kitten <laughs> but I didn't want anything to happen to it right. so but um, just things like I mean it was just so I mean you could never do some of that stuff now or no. think of doing it now you know, like we did back then it was a simpler time, right? It was, I know, and I'd love to go back to that time again. And and you, I mean, some days you, oh, I just can't wait till this to be over. I just wish I was such and such an age. Or, but now you think back, and I'd give anything to have those days back, mm -hmm. you know. But, um, and I think I told you the story about, did I tell you the story about, the Indian graves? I think I told you that, didn't I? Uh, briefly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. With Elaine, the one I called. Yeah. Um, she was our 4-H leader, and a bunch of us were over at her house doing something on a Saturday, getting ready for an achievement show. And she told us that there were some Indian mounds, supposedly, or graves on their farm. So she let us go out and start digging around and looking. And so, oh, Elaine, can we request a song on the radio? And we could tell the announcer that we're digging up Indian graves today. <laughs> and of course, she was such a good sport about it. Oh, she'd go ahead and call the radio station if you want to, you know. But, you know, you're only in fourth or fifth grade, but you feel a lot older. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Just so. So you would, you would play outside too, mm -hmm. even in the winter? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what did the outside look like? Did, did you have a bell on each school? Yeah, there was a bell, except I don't, over here, I don't ever remember bringing the bell outside. It was just the teacher would ring the handbell. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, um, and sometimes when it was really cold in the winter, we could stay in at noon, mm -hmm. you know, and do stuff by our desk or maybe... Play downstairs. Yeah, or... yeah. Because when it was so cold, you know like that, it, it just wasn't fun to be outside, right. you know. Mm -hmm. Did you have a flagpole, a well, a pump, outhouses? Uh, we had outhouses, and um, sometimes it was kind of, oh gosh, some of the girls would say, we should go to the bathroom, but we hate to, just, they're going to know we went outside to the bathroom, because that's all there is outside. And then the boys are going to tease us, and I said, "Well, what choice do we have? I mean, you've got to go. You got to go, <laughs> right. you know." But yeah, no, we didn't have a. We had to go across the road over here to the store to get water, mm -hmm. and then you were able to take turns assigned two per week to go with the pail and get the water. And of course, we loved going to the store. Mm -hmm. You know, that was the highlight of going across the road to the store. You didn't always get anything at the store, but it still was fun to go to the store. And maybe if you're real lucky, I remember my mom, like if she needed something, she'd write a note and have me go over to the store and get it. And everybody else is standing there watching you go over to the store and thinking, man, is she lucky today she gets to go to the store? <laughs> And that was one of the things when I did um, the Life After High School mm -hmm. program, different things like that, that I remember doing. And so we acted those out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not very common. Well, when you think of rural schools, you think of them in these isolated, remote areas. But you had a church next to your local school yeah. and a store. Yeah. 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 
Whereas now where I grew up, there wasn't, I mean, it was a rural area, but it wasn't anything like this. Mm -hmm. This was kind of more of a busy place compared to where I grew up, mm -hmm. yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it was nice that way. What sorts of games did you play outside? Oh, Annie I over, Red Rover, Red Rover. Um, just sometimes then we get, you know, you just for a while, oh, let's play softball. Or, and then another time, we'd all beat it out to the swings, because whoever got there first got the swings, you know, because there weren't enough swings to go around. And you have to take turns, of course, but um, just things like that. and. Oh, maybe tag or um, just, we were always finding something to do during the, you know, mm -hmm. time, a recess time. Right. Are those swings over there, are those the original? Um, I have the original ones. Oh, you have the original yeah. ones? Yeah. Okay. They, they're, now they're more child-proof or child-safe, uh. kind of a plastic type seat, mm -hmm. you know. We didn't worry about that then, I mean. Mm -hmm. Things change, you know, mm -hmm. but, yeah. So you go out to recess, you'd be called back in, mm -hmm. and finish your day around what time? I think it was until about 3.30. 3.30? Yeah. And then you'd go home. Mm-hmm. 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 Um, so, did you, do you have like a best and worst memory of country school? There could be a lot of them. Um, I don't know. Best memory is just just being able to be at the school with all your friends and and just I love the Christmas programs, you know, mm -hmm. and I love reading and having a chance to do things like that. But um, and the last day of school picnic, those were always fun. Worst memory <laughs> was when I couldn't write a paragraph. <laughs> Maybe you should erase that one. <laughs> oh, that just really scared me, you know. But it was just one of those things, I guess, you know, you learn. Mm -hmm. Well, now you wrote two books, so. Yeah, I guess, <laughs> you know. And then, of course, after that not writing a paragraph thing, I got teased about that, you mm -hmm. know, not writing a paragraph. And so, I mean, you just have to kind of let it roll over your head, but when you're a kid, that's not always easy, mm -hmm. you know. You get paranoid, so. But I, it, was, it was a good time. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a wonderful years. I just, um, I think kids today, I mean, I've had nieces and nephews say, God, you had so much fun back in the olden days. <laughs> I wish we could have gone to school like that, you know, when they see the school and they go in and visit. Right. Yeah. It was a close-knit community. Mm -hmm. You know, and it was just, um, it was just a fun part of growing up, mm -hmm. I think, you know. What are some of the major uh, similarities and differences that you see from your country school years to today's education? Oh, I think maybe some today's ed education, I mean, it, it's all fine. And one thing I'll say about my niece, she tries to do some things that they did back when, not only the just latest modern, but um, I don't know. I'm thinking, I think part of it, they're trying to get back to some more of that nowadays. I mean, just, mm -hmm. I don't know, just working together more and, I don't know, I just, I think it's gotten too far out there now, I think. I don't know. And, well, not only that, but, I mean, you had, you had to respect people and respect teachers and, mm -hmm. you know. I just, um, I don't, I just uh, think I, it's maybe gone a little far the other way, but maybe not. Maybe it'll come back again, but there was a closeness that you don't have today. 
I mean, well, not only that, but everybody's busy. And I can understand that in today's world. You've got a hundred things going, you know, sports and everything. You're just, uh, whereas then it was a simpler time, mm -hmm. you know. And maybe if there could be a happy medium. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's, at least that's my way of thinking. Mm -hmm. so. Now, you didn't have eighth grade exams, correct? Correct. But you did experience consolidation. Mm -hmm. What was that like? Going into town? Yeah. Oh, it was awful. I didn't like it at all. No? No. It was just uh, going from a school like this into town where everybody already had their friends and it was totally different, you know, as far as what went on during school and in school. and Oh, it was a terrible time for me until I got into high school. Junior high was awful. Mm. Because I came starting in seventh grade, would have been junior high, until I got into high school. I mean, it was an awful time. And people already had their friends, and you know, when you're in junior high, you know, if you're popular, and you had to have the right clothes, and the girls had all matching purses, and just, you know, and you're a little country school kid, it's, it's really different. Mm -hmm. It was an awful time for me, mm -hmm. that transition. And, but once you get in high school, you know, it's, by, this, by that time you've learned, you get to know a lot of the people and, you know. But, and in town, you know, when you're in town after school, you can go do things. We're in the country. You just can't go out and do whatever. I mean, go to the... Like, I know the couple of the drugstores had soda fountains. That's where all the kids went and hung mm -hmm. out at the soda fountains. Well, you know, we had a school bus to get on to go back home again mm -hmm. in the country. But, I mean, it was, it was a, a good experience, but, um, yeah. How I, did the country school kids interact with the town kids and vice versa? Um, I think... Pretty much, but I've talked to other kids that, that came into town and said it was a difficult time because everybody had their own friends already and, you know, it was a whole different, as one of my friends, a whole different ball game. You know, it was um, a learning experience, you know. And, you know, you think, if I would have known then what I know now, you know, but mm -hmm. that's just the way it is when you're growing up. Mm -hmm. And they all had, you know, the latest styles and the, when you're in country school, you don't worry about what's the latest style, you know, you just, um, what your mom makes and so, yeah, it was uh, quite a different experience mm -hmm. and it was hard for me at first, it really was, yeah. And the, <clears throat> Excuse me. and the academics were probably a lot different, too. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And I didn't like arithmetic. Well, then it was math. Oh, I just hated it. I was just living in fear all the time that the teacher was going to call on me. Yeah, it was just, um, yeah, it was a totally different situation. Mm -hmm. And there isn't, you don't have the closeness with the teacher like you did. Oh, sure, you can have a good repertoire with the teacher, but not not like when you're 20-some kids compared to the whole junior high, right. you know. And I remember junior high, well, this is not country school, but this was awful. <laughs> this gal that shared my lock, well, the gal that shared my locker, she, was, she had polio and she had crutches, but she wasn't there much. This one girl, I got to know her, and she had a crush on this guy that was a freshman. Well, every day he'd walk past our locker, and she'd like to see him when he walked past. So she started putting her things in my locker. Well, it got so you could hardly shut it. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't my fault, it wasn't my stuff. But, and one day, the principal, and he was a real ornery guy. I mean, he put the fear in you, let me tell you. Mm -hmm. And he saw her trying to shut the locker. And he goes, is this your locker? And she goes, no. And she gave him my name, of course. So I'll never forget, I was down in the 
English, we were having English class down in the basement in the old high school. And he said, is there an Elaine Myrie in here? And of course, everybody's turning around. And I go, come here. And he goes, come here, I want to talk to you. And I'm just shaking in my shoes, I'm so scary. Mm -hmm. What's all that stuff in your locker? I said, but it's not mine. He goes, I want that out of here by 3.45 today or you are going to get detention. I mean, I was so scared. Now, that would have never happened in country school. Right. But, you know, things like that. I yeah. mean, it really, and that's a, an age when you're, you know, growing and learning and I, it can be devastating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was just awful. Just things like, you know. And the ki town kids already were used to some of that. Mm -hmm. We called them the town kids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> town town kids. kids and the country kids, like the town mouse and the country mouse. Right. <laughs> but some of your real school classmates followed you, correct? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I'm sure everybody experienced that transition. Oh yeah, they did. You know, and they all made new friends, and and then it was also hard because one of the good friends I made, she moved away the next year. So then you start, you know. But I went to town, to church in town, so I knew a lot of the kids already. But it's still coming in from the country is totally different from living in town. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we weren't used to going to the soda fountain after school, or we weren't used to doing this or that, or you know, it was a totally different feeling. Mm -hmm. But we survived it. Mm -hmm. So Locust closed in 19... I'm not sure exactly, because it was still going for a few years, I think, after I left there. Yeah, but not too many. What was it being used for? Well, some classes. There were still some of the younger kids, I oh, think. Okay. I can't remember exactly how what year it did close. But um, the one by our house closed, oh gosh, shortly after... Um, I left Locust, I think, yeah, because I told you, you know, it was sad to come and see him dumping everything into trucks. Mm. Yeah. You know, just think of that. Now, if they would have saved some of that stuff, oh, like yeah. books and... Oh, yeah. Yeah. But that wasn't used for anything, but you've done marvelous things with Locust now. Oh, yeah. 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 There's some treasures in there. Yeah, they really are, mm. and always looking, you know, if somebody donates some certain things or, you know. Yeah, and did you ever know what a Viewmaster was? You know, you look through it, and you click it, and you yeah. see those round reels. Uh -huh. That was a big deal. Pictures. Yeah. You could check that out over here and take it home over the weekend. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> there was one reel that was about Africa or something, and... You know, the women didn't dress hardly at all and have any clothes on, you know. And, of course, the boys, hey, you guys better get that one reel about Africa, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> boys will be boys, right? Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. But um, so that was kind of a big deal to mm -hmm. see the Blue Master. But, yeah. So but I, I wouldn't give up those years for anything. Yeah. I mean, they were some of the best years of my life. What sorts of lessons did you learn from that part of your life? Oh, um, you know, adjusting to different situations and, and um, helping one another and um, being kind to all your, you know, fellow classmates and, and um, knowing that hard work, I mean, that's part of it, mm -hmm. you know. Just um, appreciating things and, you know, just things like that. And, you know, it just, it was just a wonderful time and a good learning experience, you know. It was just, um, and as I said, I was a saver, like my cat. <laughs> <laughs> Did you make other things in school? Yeah, we made, um, like, little shadow puppets and, and there was a, um, what do you call them, the silhouettes when you don't have the light. What's the name of that? Um, oh. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but, um, 
you like those colored pieces of paper? Yeah, or they, you draw, I don't know if you stand and there's a light and then you kind of draw around your face. I don't know, I can't think of the name of it. But, um, anyway, mm -hmm. but just other fun things we did. Mm -hmm. but, um, and it was always some of my best, I just love the Christmas program with all the different, um, in fact, in one of my, one of the years we focused on the Christmas program. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But I, it's a time that I'll always treasure, and I learned so much, and it was a good learning experience. Mm -hmm. So, what are what are some of the most important takeaways that you want people to remember about country school? Um, it was a time when you all worked together. And you all got along, you know, and you appreciated things and respect. Um, you respected each other and the teacher. And I guess just knowing that um, you wanted to do your part to make the world a better place. Mm -hmm. Right. Was there anything else? Like, do you have any other questions or? Um, I mean, it seems like you really enjoyed the Christmas programs. Mm -hmm. So could you kind of tell us a little bit about what you did during those? We did the Christmas story and I think we had some skits and then singing and, and um, exchanging gifts. And everybody drew in a name. And it was really neat. Um, Dennis Young, who was two years ahead of me in school, played the accordion from the time he was growing up. And I played it for a while. And um, when we did the, the uh, one of the year's things for over here at Locust, um, we focused on the Christmas program. And he came and he played his accordion. Mm -hmm. That was pretty neat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, just, I mean, I think about those times a lot, and I wish I could go back to those times. I miss them. Mm -hmm. um, so, but, um, it was interesting to compare, like, my husband's country school days with mine. Uh, he talked about their teacher, one day they were out for recess, and they thought, gee, it's funny, the bell doesn't ring. We've been out here a long time, so they looked in the window and she was sleeping by her desk. <laughs> <laughs> so they thought, well, the heck with that, let's just keep playing. Why not? So when it was time for school to be over, they went home. <laughs> Boy, did we catch it the next day, he said. <laughs> you know, you wouldn't think a deer doing that in a town school. Oh, gosh, no. You know, but, um, yeah. And the same with... Well, in my the big book I wrote, like when his aunt taught school at the end of the driveway. And Dee's dad, this is an interesting story, but um, when Dave's dad was young, um, quite young, little, their mom died. And so they had hired girls, and of course the dad was farming, Dave's grandpa. And so, and then his dad went to prep school at Luther, but it wasn't, Luther yet then, college for him, was, I don't know, it was prep school. And one day the dean called up and they said, Dave's dad's, dad's name was Ralph, and he said, is Ralph there? And he goes, well, no, he's up at school. And he goes, no, he hasn't been here for a week. And he goes, what? And so anyway, they had no idea what had happened to him. They traced, he took the train out of Calmer, and turns out he was working in a wheat field in South Dakota. And then he ended up um, joining the Navy. Well, they thought he was dead. Nobody knew what had happened to him. Well, Dave's aunt, his dad's sister, was teaching at the country school at the end of our driveway, where we would farm. And one day the mail, she was going to bring the mail home, and it was a package. And it was Dave's dad's clothes. He had joined the Navy, and nobody had known him. Huh. He joined the Navy, and he changed his name. 
and, and of course he was an avid reader, so I suppose he got this in his mind about, oh, I think I'll do this, and you know. Mm -hmm. So that's how country school, now I'm thinking, she was a teacher, and so she leaves, lets the kids play outside, and she takes off her home about a mile down the road with this package. How would you dare leave the kids there playing? <laughs> yeah. But that's how it was, oh. <laughs> you know. So it's interesting. Mm -hmm. But everybody, anybody that's gone to country school has all their neat stories and memories. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Those are good, those are wonderful times. Really why we like doing this too is because there's wonderful stories like yours and your husband's and like your yeah. and oh, yeah. everything. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you want to get, talk about that we didn't get to? Oh, or yeah, I'll probably think yeah. about it after. Yeah. <laughs> Just so we have it on camera, can you talk a little bit about um, the second book you wrote and that story? Oh, yeah. I should, can I bring it over here? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Do you want us to get it? Yeah, can yeah. I get it? You know, when I go home now, I'm going to think of all kinds of things like this <laughs> about country school. Yeah. Thank you, Molly. Yeah. Well, this is, I've, as, I, as I've told you, I've always been fascinated in country schools. And um, I wrote this book called Death in a One-Room Country School. Um, she and her parents lived down by B, well, it's called B, Minnesota. It's shortened for Bergen. But um, her parents owned the store down in B. Well, half the store was in Iowa and half in Minnesota. So there was a line that went right down the middle of the store. So on Sundays, you couldn't buy beer and liquor in Iowa. So you would walk across the line and pay for them in Minnesota. But anyway, this gal, her name was Inga Magnuson, and she was my dad's teacher. And when he was nine years old, she was murdered in the basement of the school. This is her graduation dress. And um, so I heard about this story the entire time I was growing up. And I thought, this story needs to be told someday. So I started doing research, and I'll never forget, I walked over to the, went over to the county courthouse in Wakan, and Carl Christensen was the clerk of court, and he was the nicest man. And he said, well, I think we have, we have some stuff in the back, and it was a criminal trial, so we have to save it, because it was a criminal trial. And he came out carrying this huge stick, with still had dried blood on the ends. And that was a murder weapon, which today is now in the old courthouse, which is a museum. They have a whole display about her book and all her story, yeah, and the murder weapons there. So, and I said, oh, could I take that home to show my dad? Because I said, he talked about this the whole time I was growing, so he let me take it home. And it was just eerie, that, you know, holding on to that weapon. But anyway, and so I thought, this story needs to be told. So I interviewed a lot of people, including her niece, and um, one thing led to another, and we were having the Iowa School Conference, Country School Conference, in Decorah that year. And so um, Bill Sherman, who's a country school preservationist, and he, and in fact, he's come to Locust. Remind me to tell you the story about him. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, so he said, hopefully you could have your book written by the country school conference, which is five years ago now, I think. Anyway, and so I thought, oh my. So I worked all summer on this book, knowing I had to have it ready by October, and published in the whole works, and it was a process. Mm -hmm. And so anyway, I had it um, done then by then. But I did a lot of interviewing with people, and she, her, as I said, she taught school there in B. And um, there was a man that went to school, he was older, but he wasn't quite right in his mind. And he would stalk her. And uh, he'd wait and he'd walk and watch where she was going. She was engaged, she was going to be married the following spring. And um, anyway, so he waited after, it was December. And the days were getting shorter. And I had a chance to interview the student that was the last to see her alive. The student was 90, her picture's in here. But the student had torn her coat. So Inca said, well, stay after school and I'll sew it for you. 
so it was dark then. So the student left and all the kids were walking home and so Inga came down into the basement to fire the furnace for the night. And he was sitting up on the hillside on this big rock watching her. So when he saw her go down into the basement, it's just because he goosebumps, he followed her down. And that's when he took that big stick and he just hit her, I mean he just bludgeoned her to death. And back in those days, they couldn't tell if she had been raped or not, but they were pretty sure maybe. Dragged her, her body behind the furnace, and she didn't come home from school. And people were calling around the neighborhood, and my dad said people were so scared, and my grandpa put a big two by four in front of the door because nobody knew what was happening or what had happened to her. And so they had the bloodhounds come out the next day. But in the meantime, that night, they. They found her body in the basement and they put it behind the school or behind their store in the summer kitchen. And she was in the summer kitchen. Well, her mom didn't even know. They didn't tell her mom yet. The doctor came from Spring Grove and uh, took her back to Spring Grove. And the car, I forget the name of the car, it's in here, but. Um, her body was longer than the back of the car, and rigor mortis had already set in. You know what rigor mortis mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so they couldn't bend her body in the back of the car. It was so stiff. So they had to drive with some of the door, part of the doors open in the back, one door. And anyway, um, so the manhunt began, and they were looking all over for him. And uh, he had gone up to Eitzen, and he said, I've been hunting jackrabbits. Well, first he he stole a saddle. Then he stole a horse. Now, wouldn't you steal a horse before you had carried a big saddle around the countryside? I mean, you know, that's a little bit. So then he got a horse, and he went up to Eitzen, and he said, I've been hunting jackrabbits. My jacket's kind of bloody, but so I need to get a new coat. So this all went on all during the night, and back those days it wasn't, he did this all by horseback, and it was a ways, because mm -hmm. he came from there to walk on then to the county home, and he said he was just passing through. He was a horse trader, and he was going to um, catch the train to Illinois. Well, the guy at the county home who gave him breakfast was a little fish suspected something, so he called ahead, and he was just ready to board the train in Postville, and they got him. And if it would have been just a little bit longer, and back in those days, they would have never caught up with mm -hmm. him, you know. Mm -hmm. So he, um, they had, they put him in the jail, and at that time, it was a lady sheriff, because her husband had died, so she took over his term. And so the trial was held almost immediately. And um, people came from miles around. And I don't know if you've ever been over to Wacom, but now it's, it's the old courthouse, which is a, a museum. But they'd bring picnic lunches and sit out. And it, it, was, it had to be nice. It was December. I mean, you wouldn't bring a picnic lunch and sit out on a day like today and waiting for the results, see how the trial was going. And so, but anyway, they found him guilty. My um, grandpa was a, a witness at the trial. Anyway, um, so they took him to Fort Madison, and um, his parents tried to get an appeal or whatever, and they sold practically their whole farm to try and save him so he wouldn't. But he was hung two years later at Fort Madison. Mm -hmm. And I even have a list in here when I did the research of what he had for his last meal. It was unreal, the stuff. The list is like this. <laughs> anyway. Um, but he, he didn't seem, he said to the, the guy that was with him eating there, well, eat and be hearty, because tomorrow we die, you know. So he, went, he was hung down there, and he's buried up in Spring Grove. But after that, his dad died shortly after that, I think. I don't know what happened. He had a brother, and, uh, but his mother, I mean, people were really, they called her the old witch. And she dressed in black the rest of her life, and she was buried up there in Caledonia, too. But, I mean, it left an impact on the entire community. And my dad talked about this story 
all the time and how the, he and his brothers used to walk to the store. And have you ever heard of Spring Girl Pop? No. Oh, okay. That's real popular. I mean, it's a good pop. And they sell it in the stores here now, all different flavors. But um, they used to um, go and, I mean, that was a pop, still is popular now. It's outrageous in price. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, so then I thought, well, you know, so then I thought, this story needs to be told. So then I got this written. And so then one thing led to another, and I've been doing these talks all over Wisconsin, Minnesota, and and on a dress and costume. And as I said, I can't wear this. I have this dress, but it's too fragile. It'll rip, you know. Mm -hmm. So a lady made me a replica dress. But um, so I think now next year will be 100 years. And I think it'd be wonderful to do something. I think it'd make a wonderful made for TV movie. And this man was interested, this doctor in lacrosse, but then he no longer does any writing. But um, yeah, I looked, and people call me from all over because they remember this story, mm -hmm. or so and so relatives, or whatever. So, um, but it was really interesting. And, and it's been a, um, for me, it's been an important part of history, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I just want to keep it alive. And so, um, and I've gotten to know her nieces, and as I said, they all came to our house on Labor Day weekend a few years ago. Because I have the outhouse now. I'm so excited over an outhouse. <laughs> anyway, but we dedicated the outhouse. But yeah, you, you girls can take that with you if you want to. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I'll autograph it. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so, Please do. Nice. So, anyway. <coughs> so, yeah, I just, but I've sold them different stores and uh, different places. But, um, yeah, but it's just, um, so, Bill Sherman, the country school preservationist, he did the foreword in my book, and he said I should include a story by Walt Whitman, mm. Death in the Schoolroom. It's a little short story at the very end. There's kind of a comparison between the two. Mm. And Bill Sherman's a nice, nice man. He kept encouraging me to get this written, because, you know, it involves a country school. And he was backing up, this is off the subject, but he came a couple years ago when we did a spelling bee for our, our skit, and I had him be one of the contestants. Well, oh, he was so funny. And he dressed up, and so um, he was one of the finalists in the spelling bee. And so um, during the spelling bee, then I, he was gonna, I said, well, now you can go home and study now because you can study for the spelling bee. And he said, well, but I said, because don't you have chores to do first when you get home? And he goes, well, no, not really. I said, well, what do you do when you get home? Oh, I just sit in the house. I mean, he was done. I mean, he has such a, his humor, you'd never know. I mean, he's real serious, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, I said, he said, but I was wondering, he said, if I could come back here maybe tomorrow, maybe after school and you could help me. I said, well, but school's out tomorrow. I said, would you want to bring some of the others with you? No. I just want to come in back here and sit here when you're here. And of course, the, the audience was just cracking up. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so, but I think, I mean, this story's left an impact with so many people. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've got to show you a picture of my dad. The murder weapon now, is, this is the murder weapon. Yeah, oh, it's, it's literally a stick. Oh, yeah, it's heavy. It's, yeah. Oh. Just imagine being bludgeoned to death with that. And um, no, thank you. <laughs> but yeah, it's just um, so this school teacher and um, the gal I've gotten to know, Mary, that has the place now. She just has the property, and she said, "Well, there was a bunch of rings upstairs." She said, "I wonder because nobody knows what happened to Inga's class ring." Mm -hmm. I'd love to have that. Well, here's the summer kitchen where they put her body. Oh. Okay. Yeah, just a, um, and this is the lady here that I saw when she was 90, the one that was the last mm -hmm. to see her alive. And this is my grandma. My grandma was good friends with the family. But, um, oh yeah, this is my dad right here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. So 
because their farm was not far from there. So, and there was a stump. In fact, it's in the museum now up in Caledonia. I, I have a picture of myself with the stump. Oh yeah, here, the stump. That was a dividing line at the store mm. um, between the Iowa and Minnesota. Mm. So I will um, autograph it. You guys can take it with you. Well, thank you yeah, so thank much. You. You're welcome. And the other book, that involves a whole history of, it was supposed to be just a church history, and 700 pages later, <laughs> <laughs> I thought, so, but um, it has a lot of interesting stories about when Dave's aunt taught at the school at the end of our driveway that I was telling you about when the lady fell asleep at the desk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's another country school. Oh, wow. Would be interesting to... Here you go. Oh, well, thank you so much. You're welcome. I get to read it first. Oh <laughs> Rock, paper, scissors. I mean... Like, nobody else has done that or will do that, probably, you know, uncover a story like that. And so they, I met with her niece oh, last fall. And so she had um, a little cigar box full of Valentine, Valentines from, that Inga had in, in school. And all about her teaching things, her teaching certificate and all the things she gave me. So that would make... You know, if you're still doing schools, that would be a wonderful, yeah. you know. Absolutely. Because Alamakee County, so. Well, wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much oh. for interviewing with us. Oh, I, and I'm going to go home and I'm thinking, I know I could have done a better job or I should have said this. Oh, or how come I didn't no, do that? You didn't or, you know, <laughs> this was but, wonderful. Oh, I don't know. But, well, You've done you. so much about oh. your school here and... With all of your documentation, it's some of the most well-documented stuff that we've ever seen. Oh. We're not going to see another interviewee like you again, I don't think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but if I can ever do anything or help with anything, let me know. Or mm -hmm. you know, so. Well, we are. So this spring in April, um, we are actually putting organizing an event on our campus. We have a one-room schoolhouse on oh, campus. Yeah. Uh -huh. And we're actually organizing an event on um, Iowa education of yesterday oh, really? and today. Oh. But we're bringing in panelists. And they're actually oh. former, current, and future administrators. Oh, really? Of country school and um, leading up to today. Today, So um, we could give you those details if you oh, would Oh, I would like that, yeah. Yeah, so we're like going to pack that one-room schoolhouse. Yep. And <laughs> oh, great. I should give you, should I put my address someplace? Or yeah, that yeah. would be wonderful. Yeah. Where do you want me to? Yeah. You can just write it there, use some paper. Or we're inviting Bill. And, oh, great. Oh, yeah, the big wigs, you know. <laughs> oh, I, he is such a, yeah, he's, I really like Bill. Mm -hmm. He's the one that encouraged to get have me sh make sure I got that done before the country school conference that mm -hmm. year. Yeah, we're, uh, we have, do you remember uh, Dr. Troyce Fisher? She spoke at the conference this last fall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's uh, coming to be a panelist. Mm -hmm. um, we have Floyd, Floyd. Winter. Yeah. He's a former uh, country school superintendent. Um, and then we have our current superintendent of Cedar Falls Public Schools, and they're all going to speak. And then we have a student. Yeah, a student as well. In the education department. Mm -hmm. So so we're trying to promote that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, well, great. Yeah. Be exciting. Yeah. Well, I think, it, you know, the administrator's perspective is often lost. Yeah, a bit. Um, Mainly because it doesn't really exist anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, Bill wrote the, the foreword in the book here. Oh. Yeah. I'm sure it's really well written. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, but he encouraged me to have this. In fact, he and his wife came up one day and uh, during the summer. And LaVon Bergman and I took them all around showing them all these things mm -hmm. that happened with this. So that was a fun day, and we ate in Spring Grove. So some of you guys aren't ever looking for something to do someday, I'll take you all around up there. Oh, Come please. up, and I, we yeah. can make a day of it. Heck yeah. Yeah. Absolutely.
Well, thank you again. Gosh. Thank you so oh, much. Well, I mean, we you. can't express our gratitude enough to you, Elaine. Oh, well, I'm, I, could, I know I'm going to think I should have said this or I shouldn't have done that. I should have, you know, I know I'm going to do it. I'm too much of a perfectionist. <laughs> you should, your next book should be on your country school experiences. I should, you know. Ah. The other day I started writing about, then it was, I quit, it was too painful about when I first met Dave and our first date and, you know, that kind of thing. But, um, yeah, yeah, I should do the country school. Yeah, because there's a lot of, and look at, I even say bubblegum wrappers. <laughs> <laughs> That's valuable stuff. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. Oh, wow. And Dave, one thing, I don't know.